back now. Let's hear your, your take because you've seen all sides of the fence. Yeah, you know, when you compare the breast augmentation, I think it's probably for every 10 breast dogs, we do a reduction. The rewarding, I think, on a health basis, it's much, much more rewarding when somebody has gynecomastia. I mean, breasts that are very large, that are causing grooving, that are causing rashes, that are embarrassing in front of peers, whether they're male or female, I think it's time to, uh, you know, evaluate a plastic surgeon and see if he thinks you're a good candidate. You can see two prime examples. Now, there are, again, there's there's risk with any surgery. I mean, don't forget, these young ladies feel great, but there's scars associated with them. So there's a scar around the nipple, there's a scar going down and, and at the base of the breast. But again, I mean, it makes you look thinner, makes you feel better. Uh, more feminine. You can ride bicycles. You can jog. You can do a lot of things that large, large breasts don't enable you to do. And the one nice thing is that insurance companies will sometimes pay a portion of your surgery. So these are two prime examples of very happy ladies. Now, <laughs> well, we actually but, have three know, so prime examples of very happy ladies because not everyone <laughs> wants to get rid of their boobs. Now, Diona, when I posted this on Facebook, you were the first to respond. <laughs> and you said, <laughs> uh, for those of us who have them, big boobs was all you had to say. I don't want a breast reduction surgery. I like mine, but I am sometimes defined by them, which is frustrating when you're one semester shy of finishing your second master's degree. And yet, a smart, yeah. beautiful lady like you, do you really feel defined by your boobs? Yes, I do oftentimes. What's funny is I'm a seminarian, so I get, you're in seminary, you don't look like any seminarian I've ever seen. Mm. And so, <laughs> and they're looking at my boobs when they're talking to me. So, mm -hmm. I mean, men and women do it though. It's not just, it's not just men. Oftentimes, a, a lot of people just, their eyes just dip down and, <laughs> and I'm just like, Hey, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I see, I don't have health problems with mine either. I don't have, I don't have grooving. They don't give me back pain. They're just big. And I mean, it, it's a little difficult to run, which I went on a run today and I was like, oh dear, I, gotta, I need to go to Target after I get off of here and find a new bra. But other than that, I don't, I don't want to get rid of them. Yeah, you know, and that shows you there, you know, uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Not only aesthetically, two of your ladies w are thrilled, one lady doesn't want to have surgery. So it should never be forced upon her. She isn't having any problems. She's not having health issues. So I'll leave them alone. If it's not broke, don't touch it. But if it's broke <laughs> and you have rashes, you have back pain, you're getting criticisms and you're getting little, you know, remarks from uh, friends and, and other people, then, you know, consider it. Go see a mm -hmm. consultation and go to an honest board certified plastic surgeon that will be honest with you and give you the pros and the cons and the, his recommendation. Well, I absolutely do get comments, though, all the time. Random well, people that don't know me. What do they say? Walk up. I've had... I've had a man, I was in Walmart looking for light bulbs and this man started following me around. He's like, are they real? And I'm like, what? He was like, are they real? And he like reached out like he was, I'm like, hey. Oh <laughs> and he asked me, could he touch them? Oh my God. Did you say, not. I am in seminary school? <laughs> <laughs> Shame <laughs> on you. Yeah. <laughs> You need your so, hand. You, know, you need again, a hand on you, be, Jesus. If you're, <laughs> if you're very shy and embarrassed about your the way your appearance and, and people are commenting on a, a routine basis, you know that's another reason maybe I should consider evaluating a plastic surgeon. But because it, you know enough is enough. If if this happens on a you know twice once or twice a week, at some point you have oh. to realize that maybe that is for me. Well, but here's the thing, <laughs> Doctor Nicole. Like here, it does. It is a problem. But here's the problem. One of the things that I I talk about. I actually wrote a book that included a lot about boobs called Bo Body Drama. 
It's so easy. If you decide you want an enhancement, all you have to do is go around, you know, look in the phone book or look on TV or listen to the radio advertisements, and there are tons of people who it's very easy to get financing for your for your breast enhancement. It's very easy mm -hmm. to get it scheduled mm -hmm. the next day. But for breast reductions, and I'm sure that uh, the two ladies on my panel who have had it, it's such a more complicated process, which, which why is that? It, it seems that if you want more, that's considered cosmetic. But if you want less for very legitimate reasons, not only is it way more expensive, but it's way harder mm -hmm. to do. Well, it's, it's a more difficult operation. It's a, a much longer operation. Pain-wise, I would probably tell you it's about equal because when you take an implant and you put it underneath the muscle, uh, yeah. that's discomforting. Where What we're dealing with with breast reductions and mastopexies, which are lifts, we're doing only soft tissue. Mm -hmm. A lot more trauma, but in the end game, they're about equal in discomfort and the recovery is about equal. Little more risk, little more complications with the, with the lift because you can't make a breast just perfect after a lift. I mean, they can look pretty, but a breast augmentation, <laughs> if, you, if you've got a pretty small breast, now you're going to have a pretty enhanced breast. Well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. the, here's where I would like to disagree with you. I have seen a okay. lot of augmented breasts in my day. And there are a very small number that I would call pretty. I think there are a lot of poorly done enhancements in the you're same. Absol way. You're absolutely 100% right. And don't forget, in, in America, anybody that has a medical degree, they can go to a two, you know, I went to school seven years to learn how to do plastic surgery, breast reconstruction, tummy tucks, etc. Seven years. Now you can get a GP that goes to a two day seminar and start doing breast dogs. There's a lot of skills in just doing a, a standard breast augmentation, let alone a reduction. You're going to have more quacks doing breast augmentation because it's an easier <laughs> procedure. So, so why, why are they not appealing? Some guys put them on top of the muscle. Some guys don't know what they're doing. And, and you don't have an appealing breast. But if you go to a good board-certified surgeon by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, I think you're going to get a fairly decent result and, and a good end result and you'll meet the patient's expectation. But again, you're a hundred percent right. Don't forget there's GPs, there's dermatologists, any surgeon that has a medical degree can do cosmetic surgery, which is unfortunate in my opinion, but that's the way it goes. Restraint so doctor, of trade. I'm sorry, this is Rona. Um, doctor, I'm actually thinking about having what would be my second um, breast reduction. Um, and that's because I have to uh, compress a uh, cervical disc in my neck. And right. um, I'm just wondering from when I had it in 1989, obviously I was younger, that, that has a lot to do with, you know, my recovery time. And now that I'm, you know, in my 50s, what, what kind of expect, I don't expect you to give me a diagnosis or anything, but what should I be expecting? I mean, what's realistic for me a as little, far as... I, I, you know, they're going to have to do standard measurements. They'll measure from the clavicle to the nipple. And if that distance is like 20 to 22 centimeters, you don't have to have the nipple reposition. But all they're going to probably do is take more tissue out, tighten them up a little, because over time you still continue to droop. So now yeah. it's kind of more or less a touch-up procedure they're going to do. A much oh, easier goody. operation. Yeah, <laughs> it's a much, much, much easier, much easier operation. Well, here's a tune-up, exactly.